Stephen Emmanuel. Happy Friday. It's my name's Steve Horn. I'm one of the elders at Emmanuel, and I get to share our devotion this morning with you. And it is from Isaiah 45:11 to 48:11. Um, I'm not going to read this to you today. Uh, please read it aloud to yourself later if you like. Um, I'm going to tackle it um, as looking at God's story today. I love God's story. I love looking at it in the Old Testament and seeing it revealed. I love looking at it in the New Testament played out and revealed to us. Um, and she, one way of really understanding God's story is to read a great book called Andrew Wilson, Echoes of Exodus. I think we've recommended it for you. And we're going to be as a church journeying through uh, story, Thrive Story and God's story in the next months, which is really exciting. Um, some of you may know that myself and Jane have been uh, overseeing the redemption course, which is now the Thrive Story course, um, under the capable hands of Matt Carvel and Christine Lydiard. And we have always looked to draw people into God's story and find hope in it. And this, this passages really do give you the overarching story for for the people of God. We come into Isaiah with the people having been uh, separated, in uh, enslaved by Babylon, and God brings in his chosen servant. Again, we looked at God's chosen servant, Jesus, last week. Um, this, this, this devotion, we get to look at God's chosen servant, um, who is a man, who is someone God has raised up for an opportunity to bring relief and restore um, God's temple. Um, as we say, we looked Wednesday at how Jesus has done that in our life, that he's brought worship back to us, that he has gently restored us, and led us by the hand out of the old and into the new, uh, out of old captivities into new freedoms. But today, God raises up another man to do the same. Uh, it talks about him um, using him to bring back the temple, the place of worship to God, um, to bring salvation and righteousness to his people again, so that they might bring salvation and righteousness to everyone else. Um, he does talk to his people again, saying how stubborn they are, how quick they are to question him, to question his motives, his ways. Um, he has the same discussion he has with Job, that, but am I not the God who made all things, who created all things? Um, I remember Mark Driscoll saying, you can't even make a decent sandwich, and yet you question me who made this, all the bread and all the ingredients and all the things that ever existed in the world. But we get that. We think we know better than God often. Uh, we think we're okay when God's saying, you're not okay. And he talks about raising up a chosen servant to bring rescue from an enemy. Now, the enemy here is Babylon. And he goes on to show and say how um, much, <laughs> how complete his destruction of Babylon will be, uh, how he will humble this great nation. Again, it is easy for us to forget that God will not be mocked. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You know, even great empires have come and gone. Um, man's built uh, greatness is always brought low by God. God is eternal, and these great things of God, uh, man are so temporary. Uh, you think of the Roman Empire, the Babylonian Empire. Um, even these great empires that we're emerging now, these great uh, mega, mega businesses, you know, the Amazons and the Facebooks and these great powers of government, even the you know, American government, uh, the Chinese uh, government. Um, these things can feel so permanent and so great and so powerful. Uh, even now, for us, I suppose, the enemy it would feel is this little virus called Corona, COVID-19, and how it is destroying our lives. It's putting us back in our homes. It's causing us to be imprisoned. Um, and yet, that also will pass. We need to know that, but that God is eternal this morning. 
It also talks about the fact that during that reign of Babylon, the people of Israel turned to the Babylonian idols. Uh, Azar again is saying, but look at these idols now. Look at them being carried out of the, the city on carts um, by beasts of burden. That Just see how burdensome. Do you see how burdensome your idols were? Uh, I think this season of lockdown has very, definitely exposed the idols of our hearts. I'm sure, like me, there are things that you have run to or things that you have felt um, anger and frustration, anxieties that have come against God, um, even complacency, uh, uh, escape, um, that have come to your attention or the attention of your spouse or your friend or your family in this season that you're like, oh, I thought that was gone. I thought that was dealt with. Um, you know, even the extra glass of wine or the extra bit of chocolate or whatever, even the silly little things or just a bit more TV uh, have become something that just become a necessary in this season of the mundaneness or the, um, the just the sense of unending solitude or separation. Um, we just need to recognize again today, these things are burdensome and they are nothing. But the, the one that will rescue us and restore us daily is Jesus, this chosen servant. And just the fact that God, by his grace, comes to do that in us. Maybe, even as I'm speaking, you will feel a sense of, do you know, there are some things I just need to kill. I need to get rid of today. I need to see them leave my home. I need them to leave my heart. I need them to leave my phone or my laptop. I need them to go uh, so that I can make way to worship the one true God today. There's a great promise in this that a lot of I will use you, I will pour out my righteousness and justice on you, I will, I will release you, restore you, rebuild you, I will rebuild the city, I will restore worship, I will use you to bring righteousness and mercy and grace to those around you. And these are I wills from God. Maybe God wants to use you today. And maybe you might argue for a moment with him. What me? How me? Why? And what could I do that would have any meaning? Let God win that argument today. Let him take you and use you for righteousness, grace and mercy for others today. Let him bring mercy and grace to your life today. Ask him to take away some of these idols that maybe have emerged in this season and worship him and enjoy him today. Uh, Lord, I, I want to pray that for everyone who hears this message today, that you would rise up your Holy Spirit and bring uh, a work in their hearts today that help people to see things as they truly are. Again, Isaiah says that God is the God of truth, the one true God. I pray that let the truth be known, let it set people free to worship you more, to enjoy your peace, to know that you are utterly in control. COVID will go. He will remain to be worshipped forever. And I pray that people would see that today again and enjoy God today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.